I remember, remember Gerald Cooper, the headmaster at Wimbledon Art School, who was a very renowned painter as well. He did flower paintings in the style of the Dutch masters and you wouldn't tell them apart. Every Monday morning, we used to have to take in work that we'd done over the week and put it up on a board and we'd get a pretty stiff criticism from, from, from Gerald Cooper. And we'd be sitting there and he'd wander in. One day, he, he just stood and looked at us for a while. When everything went quiet. And then he said, I'm going to tell you the secret to happiness. Get up every morning and paint a flower before breakfast. And they carried on with the criticism. Looking back on that, it was like a Zen cone which would direct you in a certain way and it's influenced me all through my life. That is what he loved to do. So the first thing he did in the morning was that which he loved. To do the thing you absolutely love doing, that you're on this earth to do, you do first and you get, give it priority because it, it is incredibly valuable. One day in the early 70s, I was walking down Sutton High Street after an evening's teaching and I passed a shop that had a made up wooden kit of a ship model. And I was so taken with it that I really wanted to buy one and build it, but I couldn't afford it. And besides which, it wasn't that brilliant. <laughs> and I knew that then. But what I saw took me back to childhood and the models that I'd seen in the National Maritime Museum. I think the real pivotal change that really tied me into model making was one day when I was delivering a model to the Parker Gallery that I had uh, I'd recently built for them. I said to Bertram Newbury, who was the proprietor at the time, I would love to have have seen a McNary model. These were the most beautiful miniature models I think anybody could ever come across. And Bertram Newby said, hang on a minute, I've got one out the back. And he fetched it through to the gallery and he said, here, and he handed it to me. So I had it in my hands, this tiny model and that was my road to Damascus moment. I came away in a daze and I knew I had to build a miniature model. I started building a little tiny model of the frigate palace, a Napoleonic ship. And that was my first attempt at building a miniature model and I realized I was home. That was where I had to go. So that is when it all started. And I haven't let go since. I think of them as three dimensional paintings. When you look at it, you sense seeing a ship like this or being aboard a ship like this I have a feeling of what it was like 
it's the moving through time, history, imagination, and new problems to solve that is one of the things that keeps me going. Working in the way that I do, it, for me, it becomes an art form, a way to move around in my mind through the world, see other places, other times, other eras, and bring that to life. I do not see that just having to stay in one place is a restriction on life. It's more having to stay in one place in your head that is a restriction on life. There does come a point where one is taking things to ridiculous ends. That's early days of obsession, of starting the first model that I ever built. And a most incredible thrill that I discovered something that suited me so much that I want to spend the rest of my life doing it. Model making is ultimately less to do with the final product than the journey. And there are, of course, many times when little is achieved. There is frustrating research to be carried out and dead times when nothing seems to move forward. But then there are many others when the work just flows and you enter a very quiet space. Time passes effortlessly. Everything happens. I was always very worried that I was going to burn out with the model making. But I haven't. I go back to it. I miss it. I go th through very dark times sometimes. A recent model I've been building. Every day has been a struggle. It's difficult. I need focus. The work is very fine. I don't want to be there. But if you keep going, you discover something new and suddenly it's as if the sun's come out and I'm loving what I'm doing again. The ships have been the one thing that's glued my life together since then, if you like to put it that way, and, and I've never lost sight of it. And I almost definitely say I haven't got up one morning without looking at, working on, or reading about ship models or ships. But I suppose the only path to locking together the enthusiasm, the information, the research, and the industry in finished models is, is a total obsession with what you're doing. It's, 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 a, it's a collection of the things that I started out at the age of 13, studying art is what my life has been about, studying and practicing art in its various forms. And this just happened to be the one that suited me and I was very lucky enough to discover it. that there are moments of excitement and pleasure when, when, when you start to see it come together. And if you can get the, the tone, the colour of everything to blend together, to give just the finish and the life that you want to a model, that, that final stage, working through it, is a joy.
Model making opened many doors for me in many ways. Engaging in creative work can be, I believe, at its best, a mystical experience. We put um, a stamp on our work that comes from... I don't know where. I don't know what is behind the creation of art. It, it's something innate in man. There are a lot of things that we really will never, ever understand. And I think that is the sort of profound, or one of the profound mysteries in human life, cr creative work and art. I have lived in what people would call near poverty. And an electrician once said to me, I wouldn't get out of bed for what you earn in a, mo in a month. But I consider myself a very, very rich man in the life that I've had because of the things I've discovered, the things I've enjoyed. It's a searching process that we do, trying to find our way in this life. And if we're lucky, we find it. And I think in a way that goes back to get up every morning and paint a flower before breakfast. <laughs> Got to find that something that feeds you.